Hello everybody, this is Alexei Kavazin, president of Fiber Foundation. And today I have a video for you where I will review uh, the contents of very interesting article, part 5 of what's new in Fiber 5. Of course, this video will not substitute the article and you still need to read it and apply these beautiful new features to your Fiverr database. However, it will help you to quickly understand what this feature is about and will give you some introduction uh, to the detailed explanations of the article. The article itself was written by Denis Simonov, one of the authors of Fiverr uh, documentation, uh, with the help of uh, Fiverr core team. So let's see. Part 5 of what is new in Fiber 5 uh, describes six uh, points. It has six sections. So let's uh, go through these sections and see how they will help improve the performance of your database and uh, improve the experience of development with Fiber database. What I like about this part that it describes the features which are really easy to apply, really easy to implement. In fact, you just need to turn on some commands or some parameters in Firebird configuration or trace configuration to see the immediate effect. On disk structure of Firebird 5 has version 13.1. On this structure is a set of uh, definitions which describe how the data are being stored on the pages of the fiber databases. And uh, when the fiber engine starts and reads the database file, the first thing in the header, uh, it will read the number of the version of the on disk structure. This number will tell the Fiber engine how to interpret, how to uh, manage the Fiber uh, database, how to read and write data. So this is uh, one of the most important characteristics of the database. Fiber 4 has uh, on disk structure 13.0. Uh, point, point so difference is minor. Uh, and in Fibert 5, actually we can work with the databases created in Fibert version 4 without any modification. So practically it, me it means that you can open the Fibert 4 database with Fibert 5 work with it, for example, for the test reasons. Of course, you can work in production. And if something is wrong, you can simply switch the instances and go back to Fibert 4. Oh, of course, it will require reconnect of all connections. Uh, but this feature, uh, when you have a database in Fibert 4 format and you are working in Fibert 5, uh, it will not give you the ability to use all new features of Fibert 5. For example, you will not be able to use compression of records, and you will not be use uh, you will not be able to use partial indices e other things. In Fibert 5, we have really good feature called Gfix minus upgrade. It is a new feature of Gfix tool which will change the on disk structure in place for the specified database. Previously, to change on disk structure between major versions of uh, databases, uh, it was necessary to do backup and restore. And if you are migrating your database from all the versions, not from Firebird 4, but from 2.5, for example, directly to 
it will be necessary to do backup in 2.5 and restore to 5 in order to allow Firebird engine uh, to work with your database. The next thing described in this article is better compression of records. As you probably know, Firebird uh, uses a compression algorithm called uh, run length encoding to compress records and store them uh, on disk. Uh, usually it's pretty effective, pretty fast. However, in Firebird version 5 it was improved and the new version of uh, compression algorithm in some cases, some scenarios can be two times faster than the existing uh, version of record compressions. Of course, database should be in the new on-disk structure in, in the ODS 13.1. And uh, if you made upgrade of the database uh, from the version 4 to version 5 using the gfx minus upgrade uh, it means that only the new data pages created under Firebird 5 with the new ODS will use the new compression algorithm. To apply the new compression algorithm to all records stored in the database uh, it will be necessary to do backup and restore. Uh, it is especially important for tables with large bar charts and with uh, large tables, large in terms of when it has many, many uh, fields, uh, columns. So definitely if you have such a uh, table in your database, you will need to do backup and restore it to, comp to use the this feature improved compression of records uh, with the 100% efficiency. The third section of the article is devoted to the cache of prepared or compiled statements. This is one of my favorite features in Firebird 5 because it allows to speed up the database in some scenarios with only one new parameter. You just need to uncomment max statement cache size in Firebird conf, conf file and apply uh, some value uh, to enable this feature, to enable Firebird to keep the prepared or compiled statements in cache. This cache is allocated per connection, so it means it will require some RAM, some memory but it gives really nice performance. As you can see on this uh, on this uh, graph, even with default two megabyte uh, parameter size, the Firebird will show some decent improvement, like several percent, and it could be up to twenty five percent of performance improvement if you will. Uh, allocate more memory like 32 megabytes per connection for example and it will be especially effective uh, for scenarios with frequent queries for example if you have a PHP application which performs a lot of frequent queries you will see a really good performance improvement only with this change of one parameter in Firebird configuration The section 4 of the article describes uh, the support for bidirectional cursors for the network protocol. The interesting thing was the general support for bidirectional cursors was implemented in Firebird 3, but it was available only in embedded mode uh, for the usual clients like you know, FB client with Delphi or, and others. Uh, it did not work and now it uh, 
Now it works. Practically, it means that uh, it is possible to uh, navigate the record set returned by some query in both di directions. So you can go forward as usual. At some moment, you can decide to jump to the beginning or jump to the end. So the navigation across the record set uh, became much easier. Of course, the first, first of all, this feature uh, will be uh, really uh, appreciated by the developers of the components of the libraries for the Firebird. Uh, but in general, it shows that the Firebird is being uh, is being improved on all levels, from the core level to the network level to the SQL level and so on. Section 5 of the article describes the tracing uh, of the compiled event. Essentially, it means that we can enable uh, the parameter log procedure compile true and as a result, we will be able to see plans of stored procedures and others, other PSQL blocks. It is really important to see the plans of stored procedures to debug and to optimize complex stored procedures. When you have a procedures with multiple levels, with many queries inside. So this is short, but really good and easy to use feature. And section six of the article describes the really good new feature of iSQL. As you probably know, iSQL is the standard tool included to every fiber distribution. It is available on Windows, Linux, Mac, and all other platforms. And it is really handy to have this feature uh, per table statistics in iSQL now. Uh, if you don't have handy your favorite uh, development tool or it could be simply too expensive to install uh, your favorite development tool on every deployed server, now you can use iSQL to see uh, not only the texts and results of SQL queries, not only plans of SQL queries, which was uh, implemented long time ago. Now we, we are able to see per table statistics. In this example, you can see that uh, for the query listed on the screen, we will see that there are some few natural reads and 500,000 of index reads. With this feature, it will be easier to debug to do some ad hoc, deb ad hoc debugging of uh, SQL queries in Firebird on every server with or without fancy guide tools. So it was all that is described in part five of what's new in Firebird 5. And now we still have part six Part six will discuss the practical usage of SQL Profiler. It is a really great feature, uh, a bit complex to use, but with true potential to improve the experience of debugging and optimization. So we will discuss it in the next article in the, and in the next video. Thank you very much for listening. So please send all your questions to this email on the screen. And also you will find the links to, to the article and uh, to this presentation in the description of the video. Thank you.